welcome to Grace Community. Hey, you all can sit down real quick. I've just got a few announcements to make today. If you are a first-time guest, welcome. Uh, we would love for you to fill out a hello card, which is uh, right here with this QR code. And you can fill that out, put whatever information on there that you're comfortable putting. And on the way out of these double doors on the right-hand side, there's a small little gift for you to take on your way out. We're just grateful that you're here, and we just want to say welcome to you. Uh, one other quick announcement. Well, I've got two more. Um, if you are interested in the safety procedures of Grace Community, what happens if this happens to certain scenarios, we're going to have a, just a real quick safety meeting today down this hallway. It's the last room on the left. If you're interested in that, if there's a fire, if there's a, uh, some active shooter kind of things, I mean, the things that you don't really want to talk about, but it would be good if some of you knew what the procedure was. So if you want to participate in that, that's immediately after church, probably take 15 minutes, and uh, and we'd love to uh, love to have you. Also, next week, if you have uh, gone through the uh, or stopped and had pizza with the pastor and kind of hung out there, and you would like uh, to kind of know what the next step is, it is a Discover Grace class. It's a four week class. It starts at nine o'clock, uh, nine thirty on March the fifth, which is next week. Um, it's about an hour long class. We'll meet down here in this hallway as well in room one hundred nine. If you want to sign up for that and learn about our vision, our mission our core values, what we're all about. We would love to have you. I think in a few weeks, um, we, we've got about 16 people that are going to make Grace Community their official home. Um, and, and they went through this class and, and got to ask questions and got to hear about um, really what, what was going on, uh, what's going on here at Grace Community. So if you'd like to do that, feel free to sign up for that as well. Also, one last quick announcement. Um, next week, we are starting with having our kids, first through fifth grade, in worship with us. So if you have a, a child that's in first through fifth grade, you will go ahead and check them in just as normal, and then you can bring them in and, and sit with them. We would certainly encourage you to do that, um, and, and then we will dismiss them about 25, 30 minutes in after we worship, and they'll go back, and they'll have uh, their time together. And I know I already heard a couple people concerned about that for, for various reasons. Uh, we love kids. We love the noise of children. We love to, to teach them what everything means in this room, what we do, why we we do it, the culture of the church, and, and those kind of things. And so we're excited about it, and, uh, and we'll tweak some things along the way, but uh, it's one of the, the things that we're, we're pretty good at around here is, is tweaking, and, um, and you all allow us to do that, and we're so appreciative of it. So next week, check your kid in. If they're uh, younger than first grade and they're in the nursery or toddlers, they can go ahead and go back as usual, but our first through fifth graders will be joining us next week, and, uh, and we're super excited about that. Hey, would you stand with me real quick? Um, I'm going to pray with you, and then what I'd like you to do real quick, uh, we don't do this often, find two or three people and just welcome them here. If you're an introverted person and you hate doing this, so do I, um, and so that's why I stand behind this piano, because it hides me and you can't see me. Uh, but I'm going to come down and find two or three people, and if you just want to shake hands with a couple people, then our worship team will, will lead us in a few songs and uh, we'll share God's word, and then we'll, we'll go home. God bless you. Uh, we are so grateful that, that you have uh, blessed us today with your presence. You're an awesome God. Father, you do exceedingly and abundantly more for us than what we ask for or think about. And, Lord, I'm grateful that your spirit it dwells within us and that you're in this place today. Father, I pray that you would teach us today. I pray, Lord, as we worship you uninhibited. Father, that your spirit would continue to fill us up, would continue to invade every single nook and cranny in, in, our, in our bodies, in our lives, and Father, that you would reign supreme in our lives. Father, that we would trust you enough to give you everything today as we, as we walk this journey called life towards heaven, towards everlasting life. Father, we love you, we trust you today, and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Find two or three people and welcome them today, and then we'll worship together.
Oh, amen. Let's worship today. Breathe, breathe in your peace. Be the calm my fighting soul needs. And when I'm weak, you are strong and you say that I am. has no place in the darkness cannot remain as you speak over me and you say that I am yours no battle rages but you
moved by the sound of his voice seas are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard and so it all Thank you, Jesus, that 
that if it is well with our soul, thank you, Jesus. But if it's not well with our soul, that we can ask Jesus to come into our hearts and we can repent. Um, last week, I'm just going to go off the cuff. So last week, um, Pastor Phil talked about bitterness in your heart. And that can keep you away from Jesus. Unforgiveness can keep you away from Jesus. So I woke up this morning, about 2 o'clock in the morning, and God started talking to me about unbelief. Um, there's a lot of times that we struggle with unbelief because of what we've been through, where, we, where we've come from, situations, and we struggle with trust. I know in my life, I've struggled with trust before, trusting in God that he will be the overcomer and I can overcome with him and walk in victory with him. So I was thinking about that. And in Exodus 3, it talks about Moses and the burning bush. So I'm going to just read a little bit about Exodus 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame, a fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Mo Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. I think that's amazing to me that he was faced with this burning bush and he asked why the bush did not burn, but he had enough faith to look at it. I will turn aside and see the great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, sometimes we just have to look and see where God is in the midst. We have to believe and trust that God is right here. And we can say, here I am, God. Here I am, just like Moses. He had enough faith, and he broke that bond of unbelief because he saw. He saw. So just when you take communion, just ponder that. You know, a couple months ago, I was thinking about Mary and how she pondered everything that God had told her, and she trusted. Moses trusted. So all we have to do is say, here I am. If your heart's not right, just like last week with bitterness, say, here I am, Lord. I confess. I confess right now that my heart is not right. Come to the altar. You can be set free. I was set free from a lot of things in my life that distracted me from Jesus. Amen? Moses saw something significant, and we can see something significant in God. The Asbury Revival, they were on holy ground. If you read Exodus 3, it says God showed up in the burning bush, and he said, this is holy ground. Amen. Don't you want that? Don't you want that? I know I do. I want to stand in the reverence presence of the Holy Spirit. I want to stand on holy ground, and I want to say, here I am. I give everything to you, God. I surrender my whole life to you. That's it. God said, I surrender everything. <laughs> when he broke his body, his body was broken for us. He said, God, it's not about me. It's about you. So this represents what Jesus did on the cross. He died and he was raised three days later, later in resurrection power. 
and we can have that too. So this right here, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So go ahead and take the bread. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup. This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So Jesus, right now, I just thank you, God. I thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross so that we can be saved. We can be sanctified. We can have salvation. We thank you, Jesus, that We can say, here I am, take all of me, not just a little bit, take all of me, and we will surrender to your will, God. Thank you, Jesus, that we can do that today and remember what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. serve a good God, don't we? Amen. Yes, we do. Y'all are moving around a lot today. I don't know if anybody else noticed that standing up here. People all over the place. You got to, that's the problem with serving coffee before church. Just saying. Then you got to go get rid of it about 30 minutes in. Hey, so uh, we're kind of in a series trying to answer some, some why questions. Um, uh, last week we looked at uh, why don't we always feel God's presence. This week we're going to uh, look at why, don't, uh, why doesn't God always answer our prayers. Um, then the, the next week we're going to look at uh, why do bad things happen to, to good people. And then the last week, we're going to try to answer the question of why would God use somebody like, like me, like us? Why, why would he use us with all of our, our, our habits, hang-ups, our faults, and, and all of those things? And, and it's a tough question to answer, why, why doesn't God answer our, our prayer? Um, I've prayed a lot of prayers across the years, like most of you, and, and I think if we were honest and I asked to see your hands, as many of you would say, yeah, there's some answers to prayer that I never did seem to get, or I didn't get at least what I thought was God was going to do in my life, and, and, and we struggle with that sometimes, and it starts to maybe ponder our faith, and why didn't God do what I asked Him to do, especially in light of certain scriptures, and if you've got your Bible app today, and, and you can always, uh, there's a QR code, you can shoot that, it'll take you right to the, the sermon today, and, and all of the, uh, the scriptures, and all of the things going on in the life of the church, but uh, if you miss something, you can always refer to that, and uh, there's usually some, some extra scriptures, and some extra questions for you to look at, and, and to answer. But John 14, 13 and 14 says this, you can ask anything in my name, and I will do it, So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and and I will do it. Seems pretty clear, doesn't it? That if we ask for something in God's name, then he's just going to do it. And then if you look at some scriptures in the Bible, there are certainly some things that we can look at that says, well, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the sun stopped at one point because Joshua asked it to. The lions in the lion's den with Daniel, their mouths were closed. Jonah prays a prayer and gets swallowed by a fish and spit up on the, on the shore. Only thing I asked for was to get to pay my bills this month, and it didn't happen. So sometimes we look at that and we think, well, is God's scripture true? Is God's scripture real? I don't know if you've ever asked that question before or had a similar thought in your your life, but I tell you that praying certain prayers will certainly build your faith, and it will certainly build your faith when they didn't get answered in the way that you thought that they would get answered. I think most of us in this room have certainly things that we share with people that are answers to prayer that we got, 
And I think I share those a decent amount from up here. We usually don't talk about the prayers that God didn't answer the way that we prayed them to be prayed. Um, I've shared this with most of you in this room, but before we moved here, um, Rebecca and I uh, flew to Florida and, and had an opportunity to move to Florida. This was literally a couple of weeks uh, before we, we started chatting with, with Danville. And, and uh, so we, we went to three different places on both coasts in Florida. Um, and one of them had a, 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 a million dollars in the bank. It was a church plant. There was nothing there other than a million bucks. Um, and they, they wanted a, a church planter. And so uh, we, we went down there for a day. We flew back home. And, uh, and I started praying, Lord, like I certainly want to do what you want me to do, but I think that this would be a great place to be called. I think this is what you should do. And I, I mean, I asked for that. I said, Lord, you, you just need to call us there. I, this, is, this, is, this is perfect. This is good. This is right. Uh, it, it, it feels good, and it, it looks good. And, and, and I think that this is probably what, what, um, what you want us to do, but I just need you to tell me that. And, and we're on a plane and in a U-Haul and, and all those other things. And uh, when, you, when you interview someplace or you, or you, you go, you get, um, you get 10 days essentially, to talk to the Lord about it and then to give an answer. Usually, a, a guy or a gal that's interviewing for a, something will, will give an answer in two or three days, you know, but, but we, I took all ten um, because I couldn't get God to say yes. <laughs> Man, I wanted him to. And I had to say no, and that was a hard phone call to make. Like, man, like the guy takes his time out of his, out of his couple days, and, and we took the time to fly down there, and we look at these places, and we meet people, and it was just a really neat opportunity, and God said, God said no. Well, did God not know the desire of my, my heart? I asked for it, and you said no. Man, that can be really frustrating sometimes. And we're going to look at, real quick, four different things, four different reasons why maybe, maybe God says no sometimes, or maybe God doesn't answer a prayer in the way that, that you think that he should, or maybe we'll discover today that God didn't really necessarily hear your prayer in the way that you thought that he could have or should have. Now, I have to start out today by giving you the same um, thing that I gave you last week. Uh, it's the fine print. The fine print is I can't give you the answers to the, these, these questions today. I really can't. But I think that we can look at some scriptures that may be able to help us, and we can certainly look to the one that can certainly tell us why certain things happen in our lives. But I can't answer the nuance to every prayer that you've ever prayed and why it didn't work out, but we're certainly going to try to look at that today. It's interesting, the, the scripture that Selena used, it's the scripture that Phil used last week, and it, it's the scripture that I'm going to start with today. The first thing that there, there could be very possible reasons why the, your prayers aren't being listened to or heard or answered in the way that you think that they should is it's because you have some broken relationships. Um, maybe you have a broken relationship, and some of you are saying, well, what in the world does that have to do with with prayer. Well, I'll show you a couple of verses that I think uh, would be helpful today to answer that. Mark 11, 24 and 25 it says, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Now, I, I, I've said this before, but I read Scripture backwards sometimes or opposite of what it says because I'm not real bright, and I figure if I can figure out what the opposite is, I can understand the meaning a little bit better. But when I read this, it, it kind of says to me that if, I, if I'm uh, praying for something and I've got a broken relationship, I've got hate, I've got frustration, I've got difficulty in my life towards somebody else, it's keeping my prayers from being heard by God. I don't know if you read it that way, but I think it's certainly pretty clear that I need to leave what I have at the altar, and I need to get up and make things right. He says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe you received it, it will be yours, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, you need to forgive that person so that your Father in heaven may forgive you. 
So Jesus here is talking about you praying, and then suddenly he says, if you've got a horizontal relationship that isn't right, it's going to affect your vertical relationship with me. If you have a horizontal relationship here on earth that's, that's, that's frustrating, that's not good, that's not right in a way that dishonors God, you're going to have a hard time with your vertical relationship with the Father. Now, a lot of us don't like to hear that because we'd rather not take care of our horizontal relationships because it's difficult, it's hard, it's, it's frustrating, it, it, can be, um, it can be challenging. And so you can't go around giving all of this to God and saying, you know, God, I'm asking for this, but I think so-and-so's a really pathetic person. It, it just isn't gonna, it isn't gonna turn out real well for you. And so the Bible says, leave your gift at the altar. First go and reconcile the relationship, make it right, then come back and give your gift at the altar. Because your horizontal relationships impact your vertical ones with the Lord. And honestly, I, I don't know uh, much about how this works. I, I don't know if, if, it's, uh, if there's, there's got to be hate in your heart or frustration or difficulty. I, I don't know where the, the nuance is in there for the Lord, like where's the place that I need to leave the altar and go forgive. But when you, when you hold something against someone in a way that it affects you, you probably got some unforgiveness in your life, and you probably need to deal with that before you start throwing things at God, wanting all of these things, and asking for all of this help when he's, you're, being an, you're being disobedient. Amen? Does that make sense? You're being disobedient. So I kind of think of it like this. When all four of my kids are in the car and they're arguing and they're, they're kind of frustrated and we're headed to get ice cream and they're, they're, they're taunting each other and they're touching each other and they're hollering and screaming and yelling. And, and what do I say? Oh, well, no, I don't say I'm going to kill you. That's, that's a little extreme. Was that you? Was that him? I let you preach from time to time, so let's clean that up. My mom told me never to say I'm going to kill this person. Honestly, Felix. No, I say I'm going to pull the car over and ain't nobody getting ice cream, right? I don't want to do nice things for my children when they're not behaving. Now, I don't know if that's the way God works, but it seems to be in this instance. Certainly God gave his life for us knowing that we were going to be sinners. I totally get that. But I can also say that the Father has a problem when we have horizontal relationships that we are being disobedient in. He's under no obligation to give us ice cream. He's under no obligation to hear our prayer. And I think that that's really important for us to understand. I care about the way that my children treat each other. And to some level or another, Scripture seems to be pretty clear that our relationships matter in prayer. Here's another one. Uh, this is a little bit more, more um, uh, uh, gives you a better example maybe. 1 Peter 3, 7. In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should. Why? So your prayers will not be hindered. Again, <laughs> Husbands, wives, treat each other with respect because if you don't, it affects your vertical relationship with the Lord. So, what's one reason that maybe God's not hearing your prayer or answering them the way that you want Him to? Well, it could be that you have some broken relationships. The second possible reason, if you're taking notes or you're on the app and it's in the next, uh, the next uh, slide up, is this. Maybe you have the wrong motives when you pray. Maybe you've got the wrong motives. James 4, 3 says this, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with what? You ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. Can anybody say Powerball? <laughs> you may say you're praying with the wrong motives. Well, the Pharisees did this all the time. Uh, the, the Pharisees would make a real big spectacle of prayer. I've been around a lot of people that pray. Many of you have. And there are some people that think God's hard hearing. He's not. Uh, you don't need to pray loud when you pray. You don't need to yell. You don't need to 
do a lot of different things that people have done. I've had people rub on me in ways that I didn't want to be rubbed. I'm just saying, it's happened. It's weird. You're not doing that for God. You're doing that for show. See, see, God's not a showman. Uh, God, God doesn't care, care about those things. As a matter of fact, when God speaks to us in a still, small voice, I think it's okay that we talk to God in a still, small voice. I think we can talk to God like he's our friend. Not, not that he's a hard-hearing friend or if we get louder that he hears us better. We do that with the wrong motives sometimes. We pray with the wrong motives sometimes. Now, you may say, but my motives are right. My motives are pure. You, you know, I'm, 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 playing for my, I'm pr- praying for my favorite football team to win because I got money riding on it. You know, you could go through those things. So I, sometimes we're not so clear on what our motives really are. And again, I can't judge your motives. But Proverbs 16.2 says, all a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by who? The Lord. Motives are weighed by the Lord. Why didn't God answer my prayer? Well, I may have a broken relationship. I may have a wrong motive. And the third reason may be this. Maybe you don't believe God will do it. Now, I want to be super careful here because I think there's bad teaching that goes around or it's not teaching that we want to to teach. And so uh, follow me through this one. Maybe you don't really believe that God's going to answer your prayer. And, and again, we want to be careful here. Mark chapter 9 is a really important story about a dad who had a son that was possessed with an evil spirit. Now, anyone who's a parent can, can, can understand trauma and emotional burden with this. And, and here's, what, here's what the guy says. Let me find this. The Spirit often throws, this is Mark 9, 22. The Spirit often throws him into the fire, the dad talking about the son, or into water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. Now, I don't know if that just rubbed Jesus the wrong way in the moment. I don't know if he got mad or he was just like, uh, I think, buddy, I'm going to teach you something. Verse 23, what do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. Everything is possible for him who believes. Now, again, I want to be real careful here and, and say this. Your faith matters when you pray. It does. Over and over, Jesus says, it was done unto them, what? According to their faith. But I want you to understand that when we pray, when I prayed about Florida, when I pray about this, that, and the other, and I hope when you pray that you certainly tell God what you want. But at the end of the prayer, and I hope that you mean this, you will always say or should say, and you've got to mean it. It's not the words. It's that your heart means it. Father, not my will, right? But your will be done. And if it's God's will, it will be done. Amen? And it's super important that we understand that. Now, can I tell you that it's not God's will that every man, woman, and child on the face of the planet gets healed physically? It, it's just not. That, that's not God's will for some people. I don't, can't tell you why. I can't tell you I understand it. I can't tell you why people leave us before that they're supposed to. I can't tell you why people get cancer. I can't tell you why people are molested. I can't tell you those things. But I can tell you that I understand this, is that I've got a God that will, will, will pony up alongside of me, amen, and, and will come up alongside of me and will wrap me in his arms, and he will walk with me through some storms in, in life. And I think it's really important that that we understand God's will. And can I also tell, and I'm jumping ahead to next week, when bad things happen to good people, it is not God's will. I'll just give you the crux of the sermon next week, okay? But we're going to talk about that and what that looks like. So make sure that you you, you come back. Um, We depend on God. I can tell a lot of things by people when they say, well, we've done everything we could. The only thing left to do is to pray. (laughs) You and I should start with that as followers of Christ, just helping you out here. We should first pray about everything, amen? We should first pray, then we'll go to the other things, and and we'll go to the doctors, and we'll go to the attorney, or we'll go to the expert, or we'll go to the whatever, but I want you to understand that you've got to start with the Almighty that dwells within us for the answers. He will guide you into what you need to do. 
Now, here's what I'm not saying, and I think this is important. In the Christian world, this doesn't mean anything to some of you, but some of you it will. There's a teaching that's often called word faith teaching. And it just means that if you say the words and you just believe it, that God's got to do whatever you want. That's junk theology, okay? It doesn't work. God's not a big sugar daddy in the sky. Just because you claim it in the name of Jesus doesn't make it so. Some of you in here do that. I've, I mean, I've heard some people here. I've heard people in Sterling. I've heard people in Green Bay. I've heard people at district assemblies that if I just say it and I say the words in the right way, I, I had a book that was passed around not too long ago that told you exactly how you were supposed to cast out a demon, and you had to say it in this way, and if you said it in this way that God had to do it, God don't have to do anything that God doesn't want to do. And there's not some magic little potion that you, you, and you rub God's head in just the right way, and in Jesus' name, it just awfully, it doesn't work that way. We serve a sovereign God. It matters what we believe, amen? It matters our faith. For example, if you're a single guy and there's a cute Christian girl here, and, and you're like, hey, I want to hook up with her, and then you say, well, God, I'm going to say it out loud, and I'm going to mean it, and she's going to fall in love with me, you're just weird, God doesn't work that way. People get upset that grandma uh, died. You know, God didn't heal my grandma. She was 99 or 100 or 102. People die. We're all going to die. Welcome to Grace Community where we lift you up. You're all going to die in this room. You can't stop it. God's not going to stop it. Here's what I want to say really clear is it just because you have all this faith doesn't mean that God's got to do it. But at the same time, I want to say that your faith does matter. It does matter. I can't explain all of the nuances of that. It's not something that I can do, and if somebody tells you that they can, they're, 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 I don't believe it. But maybe God didn't answer your prayer because you're kind of half-hearted, maybe. Maybe you didn't think that he really could, maybe. Scripture again talks about this in chapter 1 of James, verse 6 and 7. Speak about wisdom. He must believe and not doubt, because uh, he who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. Why didn't God answer my prayer? I don't know. But maybe you have broken relationships. Maybe you didn't really believe that that's what God was going to do. Or here's the fourth thing. I think most of the time, this is where I would land, is that maybe God's got something different. That's a whole lot better than what you wanted. Maybe God had something different. And I hope you know that, that's, that's, that God's will matters, not yours. God's will matters, not ours. As a matter of fact, his will really matters. And even though we think that we know best, even though in our mind this is the right thing, can I tell you that John 5, 14, and 15 says this? That if we ask anything, according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. And I love that, that we have the confidence of knowing that if we ask God according to his will, that he hears us and that he will answer it and he will affirm that that is his will. Matter of fact, I think God loves us so much that sometimes he says no. I, I've talked to uh, Tate especially about this, and I should talk to um, probably Ruby at some point, but if, you, if you're a news junkie, I, I love the news, I enjoy the news, and, and uh, there's, there's little gummies that go around now that uh, are full of fentanyl, okay? It's a little gummy. It looks like a, a gummy bear. It looks like a, a chewy thing, squirt thing that we eat at our house. What are them things called? What are they? Fruit snacks. Gushers. Gushers. Yeah, gushers. They look like little gusher things, and, and, and they look good. They look good. You ever pray for something that looks good? Oh, I don't know, like Florida <laughs> right now. You ever pray for a spouse that looked good and then you realize later on they went off the deep end? You ever pray for things that look like maybe they're God's will? That look like they could be right? But then you partake in it because you forced it 
You didn't wait on the Lord. And you take that, that gummy that somebody kid handed you in the hallway and you drop dead because it was full of fentanyl. It looked good. It looked like the right thing. It felt right. A friend gave it to me. See, God, God says no a lot of times because God knows. You don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes. I, have, I haven't the foggiest idea. But I can tell you that the God that I serve knew that a pandemic, a pandemic excuse me, was coming in 2020. Sorry, I lose way track of time. And that if our family would have moved to Florida, everything shut down. We would have had no way to even feed ourselves. There wasn't a church to be had. There was no church. There was no people. One place, there's no building. So you've got a building that now you've got to figure out how to pay bills on. The Lord knew that Jeremy's skill set probably didn't match that. Ooh. Hmm. God knows things that we don't know. God knows what's going to happen in the next 10 minutes. So when God says, you do this instead of this, we do what God tells us to do. Whether it looks right, feels right, as long as it's not against his word and you know it's God, you better do it. And prayer reminds us of this. And I think this is really what prayer is about. Prayer reminds us that we're not in control. Prayer reminds us it's not about me. I'm not in control. And, but it does this. It keeps me close to the one who is. Amen? It keeps me close to the one who is. Prayer's not so much about my wants as if it's, um, excuse me, prayer is not so much about my wants as it is God's will. It's not God, do what I want, do what I want, do what I want, which is how some people pray. If I say it louder and I say it longer and I've got this thing and I've got this thing and I rub that and I do this and I stand this and I get the right people in the circle, then God's going to do it. It doesn't work that way. I'm just telling you, it just doesn't work that way. There's nothing special about you and me in that area. It's God that does the work. Amen? It's God that does it. You can yell at him about it or you can whisper it to him. He's still going to do it. Or he ain't going to do it. You can have the right people in the room or the wrong people in the room. I'm going to tell you if it's God's will, it will happen. If it's not God's will, it's not going to happen. I'm just here to tell you that. We have access to God. I don't know if that does anything to you or not, but I have access to the Father. I have access to Christ. I have access to the Holy Spirit. I have access to him. I have access to him right now. I have access to him at lunch. I have access to him when I lay my head on the pillow at night, and I get to say, God, whatever you want tomorrow, <laughs> amen, I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of it. So whatever it is, I just want to be a part of it. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know where you're going to move, but I want to be a part of it. And it may be a home run kind of a day, okay? It may be a home run kind of a day. At work, in your marriage, in your relationship with your kids. And then it may be a strikeout kind of a day. Amen? It may be a strikeout kind of a day. I get up, car won't start. Get in an argument with your wife or your spouse. Your kids are who knows what they're doing. They're screaming at each other. You come to church and you try to preach a message and it was horrible. Somebody's mad at you because of this, that, and the other. You can't take your afternoon nap because you got birthday parties to go to and something else to do. And it's just a cruddy day. You know what I want, though? I want God to show up in the, in the strikeout days, too. I want God's will in the strikeout days. I want God's will in the home run days. I know God is there no matter what, and I want his will, his good and pleasing and perfect will in my life. Anytime I pray something that doesn't go the way I want, there's a great story in the Bible. I had a pastor's wife, um, Mrs. Hughes, and she would say, Shadrach, Meshach, and under the bed we go. I don't know why, but that's what she said. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
These are guys that, that weren't going to bow down to the king, and so they got thrown into what? The fiery furnace. And you can read the scripture, and it's probably in the app. Um, they say this. We know God's going to save us. <laughs> but if he doesn't, <laughs> right? But if he doesn't, we will not serve your gods. Even if he doesn't deliver me, even if he doesn't answer my prayer, even if it doesn't get answered in the way that we want to, even if you didn't show up and heal grandma, even if you didn't show up and heal my child, even if you didn't show up and, and fix my finances, even if you didn't show up in the way that I thought that you were going to show up, Father, I'm still going to love you. Why? Because I trust you. I trust you. I don't trust myself. My ways are fleeting. My ways are horrible. They're, they stink. Anybody want to say amen to that? Yes. You've all tried it on your own. I've tried it on my own. The only thing that's good, the only thing that's right, the only thing that's pleasing, the only thing that I really know that works, the only thing that I know is right, the only thing that I know is truth is God's will for my life. That's all that I know. I know what's, what's wrong. I could list those all day long. But I want what's good. I want what's right. Our praise team is going to come, and we're going to close with a song today. But I just want you to understand today that I believe in prayer. I believe in, and prayer to me is this. It is communication with our Father. It is communication with our Father who made us, who designed us, who put us together, who formed us perfectly, who knows how many hairs are on top of our head. He knows everything about me. He knows more about me, which is the crux of the sermon, than I know about myself. He knows what I need tomorrow. He knew what I needed yesterday, and he knows what I need in the future. Amen? And if you know and you've got access to somebody that has the desire to help you in the future and knows your, his will for your life in the future, why in the world would you want to keep control yourself? I haven't the foggiest idea. Some of you in this room may not know the Lord. I may have talked way over your head today because you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I want to tell you this. Um, 2,000 plus years ago, uh, there was a man named Jesus. We believe in him. We serve him. Um, and, and he was a perfect sacrifice. He gave his life so that you and I could have a relationship with him. We all recognize this picture on, the, on this window over here. It's Jesus hanging on a cross. Even if you don't know the Lord, you've seen that before somewhere. And Jesus, who was a perfect sacrifice, because used to, people would go into the temple and they would sacrifice um, animals or they would sacrifice certain things or you would bring certain things as a sacrifice to make, to basically absolve yourself of something. And so Jesus came and said, you know what? I'm going to live a sinless, perfect life. I'm going to be the perfect sacrifice so that now you can have a relationship with God. You can have a relationship with the Father. You can have a relationship with me. And you don't, have to, you don't have to kill bloody bloody animals. Aren't we glad for that? We don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to, to bring this and that and the other. You don't have to do these certain things. Jesus said, I want a relationship with you. I made you. I formed you. I created you. And I'm going to come and save the world. I'm going to seek and save that which was lost. Because most of us in this room have known at a time in our life that we were lost. Some of us may still not know it. I, I know that there are times when I can still get lost. Amen? And the cool thing now is, is always I've got access to Christ because he dwells within me and, and he tells me I'm lost. Jeremy, hello. Um, but what I want you to understand is that Christ went to a cross for you. We're going to celebrate Easter pretty soon. So he got down off of that cross. He was dead. They killed him. And they took his body and they put it in a tomb. And three days later on Sunday, he arose. Nobody cast a spell. Nobody did this. It, uh, the, the stone was rolled away. Jesus comes out, and, and, and then he appears to people. He, he appears to his disciples. He appears to different people. Oh, over the course of, I think it's around 30 days. I'd have to look that up just to confirm that. But I think that that's exactly, it's about 30 days. Jesus is seen by different people. And so Jesus, before he went to the cross, go, though, tells his disciples, hey, I'm going to give you something greater than just me. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit can be in every single person in this room, every single person in this place. I can only be in one place at one time, Jesus is like. 
I can only be in one spot. But the Holy Spirit, which is my spirit, I'm going to allow to to be put inside of you where he can guide you, lead you, correct you. He can teach you. He can do all those things, bring you comfort. He can do all of that. And that's what we're talking about today. There comes a time in your life where you want more. Amen? Some of you in this room that are, are chasing after something, you don't even know what it is. I'm telling you, it is a relationship with Christ is what you're chasing. You're looking for it in all the wrong places, and you're in the right place today. Today is your day of salvation, my friends. And the cool thing about this, and I love this about Jesus, because I wouldn't have done it this way, because I'm just a mean-spirited person. Jesus says, it's going to cost you something, okay, to follow me. It's going to cost you something. And he essentially said this, it's going to cost you everything. I want you to give me everything. The thing that I would have done different is he said, you can do it right now. See, I'd have have put together a whole process. He said, you can do that today. You can give, give your life over to me today, and in that moment, in that instant, my spirit, when you ask me to come into your life, will move into your life. And you will, it's, there's, there may not be bells and whistles, I'm just going to tell you. There may not be any confetti poppers right behind you when that happens. Boom, scare you to death. That's, that may not happen. But can I tell you, when you get up, you can walk victoriously by faith, knowing that the Spirit of God moved into your life and now has changed your life in an instant to bring you purpose that you never have desired, or or you've desired, but you can never find in any of those other places. And He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Some of you have, have parents that have died or walked away or they've gone away. Can I tell you, that that's life and it stinks, but I can also tell you this, that that's, that's not God. That's not Christ. He, he's, he's, not, he's not one to leave. He, he won't leave you. He won't turn his back on you. He won't walk away. Now, you can walk away from him, okay? You can do that. He's going to give you freedom to do that. That's your choice. But I'm going to tell you right now, he will pursue you. He's pursuing you right now. It's why you're in this space. An old timer would say that the Spirit of God is wooing. He's wooing you today. He's been calling on you. The sun came up today. Why? Because God wanted to woo you into a relationship. He wanted to say, look at what I did. You don't know me, but I'm going to do this anyway. Look at what I did. And so if you don't know the Lord today, you can come. And there will be people that will come around you and pray with you and they're not going to make you feel weird or awkward and they're not going to try to make you do something weird or crazy and they're just going to pray with you. There's some of you in this room that maybe your life is just kind of a mess right now. It's just kind of a mess. And you've kind of walked away from God. You've, You've kind of forgot that he was there. You're the person that kind of turns to prayer at the last resort. And you know that you should turn to him first. And maybe you just want to come and pray today. Maybe a third group here today that just says, you know what, God's good. God's great. He hasn't answered every prayer the way I wanted him to, but I still trust him. And I just want to come and kneel. I want to give him praise today. I just want to thank him for what he's doing in my life. Stay to your feet. I want to pray with you. And as the praise team sings, you feel free to come. Feel free to kneel. Feel free to praise the Lord however you feel led today. Father, you are an awesome God. That's done exceedingly and abundantly above all that we've asked for or thought about for every single person in this room, whether they know it or not. Father, you're a God that we get to communicate with whenever we want to. As a matter of fact, your word says to pray without ceasing. Pray all of the time. Commune with me all of the time. Speak to to, to the Father, to Jesus, to the Spirit. Speak to me all the time. Talk to me. Father, that tells me that you want a relationship with me. Every single person in this room you want a relationship with. Whether they know you or whether they don't. Whether they're thumbing their nose at you right now. You still want a relationship with them. 
Father, remind us today that, that your will is good, it's perfect, and that our will, will is not. Father, as we pray prayers over the course of our life, prayers that maybe don't go the way that we want, remind us who you are. Remind us who we belong to. Remind us that you are a big, sovereign God that knows a whole lot more than we do and that you desire relationship with us in a way that we don't even understand. Father, today, if, there's, if there are people in this room that need to get right with the Lord before they leave, I pray that they're obedient and they do that today. Father, as we sing this, this is just a prayer again to you. It's a praise to you. We worship you today, and we love you, and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.
for filling us with your presence, your spirit that dwells within us. And Father, dwells within this place today. Father, we trust you. We trust you on the mountain and we trust you in the valley. And Father, for those of us that have walked with the Lord for a long time, that's really the crux of our, really some of our thoughts. Things don't always go as planned. But Father, at the end of this life, when we draw our last breath, we're a follower of yours. We will slip into your presence in a way that we've never experienced. Father, I am grateful that, that as we pray for healings and we pray for, for, for miracles after miracle after miracle, Father, that you hear us and that you love us and that you desire, Father, for your children to experience you in ways that, that we can't even describe. I'm grateful for that. Father, at the same time, I realized something a few years ago when I started doing nursing home ministry. It's that, Father, you didn't create me for 10 years, 30 years, 60 years. You didn't even create me to live to be 100 years. Father, you created me and every single person in this room to live for eternity with you. Father, death has no hold on any person in this room. It doesn't. And we are grateful for that. It never had a hold on you, and it doesn't have a hold on us. So, Father, again, in the valley or on the mountaintop, we will trust you. Because at the end of the day, we get to spend eternity with you at your feet <laughs> together. And we are grateful for that. Father, there are so many needs represented in this room today and in this building. We pray this, Father, that you would show up in ways that we never dreamt of. Father, that you would heal people. Father, that you would touch people's finances. Father, that you would heal people's relationships. Father, that you would do what only you can do. Father, I know that it is your will, and I know this. It is your will that no man, woman, or child be lost. It is your will, Father, that every single person on the face of this planet knows you. So, Lord, as we run into people this week that don't know who you are, I pray, Father, that you would give us words of obedience in those moments to speak truth in the way that would bring honor and glory to you. And that somebody this week, because of our obedience and because of who you are, would change their eternal address from hell to heaven. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon.